Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be simplifying a rational expression. We're given that x plus y plus z is equal to zero, and we're supposed to evaluate x to the fifth power plus y to the fifth power plus z to the fifth power divided by x, y, z times the quantity x squared plus y squared plus z squared. Now, you might be questioning something like, are we always gonna get a numerical value from here? Are we supposed to find this in terms of x, y, z? Let me tell you that we are going to be getting a numerical value. So that's what we're supposed to do. If this was a multiple choice question, obviously you would see the choices and it will be easier to figure out. Now, I'm going to be presenting two methods. Let's start with the first one. Now, we are given that x plus y plus z is equal to zero and we have the sum of fifth powers and we have the sum of squares and we have the product. Now we don't really have something nice for the product, but the product is gonna come up later. So let's go ahead and start uh, by squaring x plus y plus z, because that's gonna give us something about the sum of squares. Since x plus y plus z is equal to zero, its square equals zero. Now, as you know, or you should know, x squared plus y squared plus z squared plus two times xy plus xz plus yz is equal to x plus y plus z squared. Great, so this is equal to zero. And from here, my goal is to get the sum of the squares. So let's isolate this. So that's one of the things that I'll be using later on. So let's go ahead and save that for future use. This is the sum of the squares. And then I would like to get something about the sum of fifth power, but obviously, you don't want to raise x plus y plus z to the fifth power. I mean, you could definitely do that. That would probably be like a third method or something like that. But that would be time consuming. So we'll be smarter than that and go with the cubic. So here's the plan. I'm going to work with the sum of cubes and then multiply these together, the third power and the second power to get the fifth power. Obviously, I'm going to be getting extra terms, but we'll take care of them. All right, so that's the plan. Let's go ahead and consider the identity. Now, for this one, you can cube x plus y plus z, but if you already know this identity, and I think we've talked about this a few times in other videos, if you have x cubed plus y cubed plus z cubed minus 3xyz, you should know that this is divisible by x plus y plus z. Okay, this quantity or this expression is divisible by x plus y plus z, that is good to know because it allows you to factor it. So we're going to factor this and hopefully you'll rem you remember this from earlier videos or from somewhere else. One of the factors will be x plus y plus z. The other factor is going to be x squared plus y squared plus z squared minus xy minus xz minus yz. Now this can be done uh, by, you know, considering y cubed plus z cubed as a sum of two cubes and then factoring it and then finding a common factor, so on and so forth. So factoring this expression is a whole different thing. I'm not gonna get into that, but let me just tell you that this identity exists. And it's good because it brings up the product x, y, z, but also uh, we get the x plus y plus z on the right hand side. And we know that x plus y plus z is equal to zero. Therefore, the whole thing is equal to zero on the left hand side and that gives us an identity for the sum of cubes. So this is the second identity that I would like to use. So let's go ahead and save that as well. Now we have the cubes, we have the squares. Let's go ahead and put these together. Let's multiply them. So when we multiply x cubed plus y cubed plus z cubed by x squared plus y squared plus z squared. You're gonna get a lot of terms here. You're gonna get nine terms. And obviously some of these terms are gonna give you the fifth powers, but you'll also get some extra terms. So let's see how this goes. I'm gonna use the distributive property, x cubed times x squared. It's just gonna be x to the fifth power. And then I'll be getting x cubed y squared, x cubed z squared, and then y cubed x squared, and then y to the fifth power, and then y cubed z squared. And then I'll be getting z cubed x squared plus z cubed y squared, and finally 
z to the fifth power. Now, here's the thing. I have the sum of the cubes and the squares, and I want to just distribute the right-hand side and not worry about the left-hand side yet. But later on, I'm going to be using this to replace uh, the sum of cubes with something, and then I'm also going to be using the sum of the squares to replace this with something. All right? But let's go ahead and simplify the right-hand side first. We get x to the fifth power plus y to the fifth power plus z to the fifth power. And then I want to group these together like x cubed y squared with something that would go uh, nicely with this one, which is y cubed x squared. So let's go ahead and uh, factor those together. Uh, take out x squared y squared, you get x plus y. And then similarly, you get x squared z squared times x plus z and y squared z squared times y plus z. Awesome. Now, this expression might look a little confusing because we got some weird terms like x squared, y squared, multiplied by x plus y, but our identity is going to come to the rescue one more time. We know that x plus y plus z is equal to zero. So that's super important, right? And what is that supposed to mean in this context? If the sum of this, uh, if the sum is zero, so I know that x plus y plus z is equal to zero. This implies three things. X plus Y can be written as negative Z. X plus Z can be written as negative Y. And Y plus Z can be written as negative X. So let's go ahead and do those replacements and see what we get from there. So we're going to get X to the fifth power plus Y to the fifth power plus Z to the fifth power. And then now X plus Y is going to be replaced with negative Z. So that's going to give us a minus term, minus X squared Y squared Z minus x squared z squared y minus y squared z squared x. Okay, great. Now, uh, this is obviously much uh, better than the previous one. And now, I would like to make it even better by factoring the negative terms. Well, they're not necessarily negative, but just, you know what I'm talking about. So, pull out a negative x, y, z, and then you're going to get x, y, plus xz plus yz inside the parentheses. Everything was negated, so uh, that everything inside the parentheses is going to be positive because we took out the negative. All right, great. So this, remember, is equal to the product of the sum of cubes and the sum of squares. So we kind of have to do those replacements now. And let's see what we get from there. So I'm going to replace x cubed plus y cubed plus z cubed with 3xyz and then x squared plus y squared plus z squared with negative 2 times xy plus xz plus yz. And let's see what we get from there. So we're going to be getting the following. x cubed plus y cubed plus z cubed is going to be replaced with 3xyz. And then the other one is going to be negative 2 times xy plus xz plus yz. Because of the parentheses, I just wanted to use brackets there. And then this is equal to this, obviously, because that's the right-hand side. And it's just going to be x to the fifth plus y to the fifth plus z to the fifth minus, and I probably need a little bit more room here. Let's go ahead and move this a little bit to the left. So like this. Okay, that's good. And now minus, uh, I get x, y, z. Oopsies. x, y, z times x, y plus x, z plus y, z. Okay, cool. Now, how does this help? Well, here we do get a product. Right, and we can simplify that. Uh, three times negative two is negative six, so that gives us negative six x y z multiplied by x y plus x z plus y z. And on the right hand side, of course, we still have our fifth powers, and then this product is just the same thing as uh, you know the the product on the right uh, the, on the left hand side, but it's just with a negative one uh, times that, right? So if I go ahead and move this to the left with a positive sign, it's just going to be negative six, let's call this apple, negative six apples plus one apple, that's going to make negative five. So here's what we get from here by putting the right hand side on the left hand side and adding like terms, we get the following, x to the fifth plus y to the fifth plus z to the fifth, which is this, is equal to negative five times x, y, z multiplied by x, y plus x, z plus yz. Awesome. This is what we wanted to get. So in other words, we were able to express the sum of the fifth powers in terms of the product and the 
the two-way sums, x, y, x, z, and y, z. So this should also go well with uh, Vieta's formulas. You hopefully uh, know those. And I think uh, I've, you know, uh, we've done a special video on that one. And I could probably refer to that as well here. Anyways, so let's go ahead and put this all together. Remember, our expression, the original problem was x to the fifth plus y to the fifth plus z to the fifth divided by x, y, z multiplied by x squared plus y squared plus z squared. This is what we're supposed to simplify and you know, find a numerical value from here. Now we have everything we need. Let's go ahead and replace the numerator with negative 5xyz times this quantity. And then the, the bottom for xyz is just going to stay the same. We notice that they're going to cancel out eventually, but what about the sum of the squares? We also have something for that. Remember, we used it in our expression. So this is something we can use. So x squared plus y squared plus z squared can be written as negative 2 times that. So let's go ahead and write it as, again, using the brackets, negative 2 times xy plus xz plus yz. And of course, this is going to turn into negative 2xyz times blah, 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 but you don't really need to get into that. It's already clear, I think. Now, let's go ahead and simplify this. xyz cancels out. And this quantity completely cancels. Oh, obviously, you don't want them to be zero. We'll talk about that uh, in a little bit. Uh, you don't want any of these uh, to be undefined. And this gives us negative 5 divided by negative 2. And that gives us 5 halves as the final answer. So we get a numerical value regardless of the values of x, y, z. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the second method. And then I'll talk about some restrictions on x, y, z. Maybe we should talk about those earlier, but, you know, we didn't, so that's fine. So we are given that x plus y plus z is equal to 0, and we're supposed to evaluate x to the fifth plus y to the fifth plus z to the fifth divided by x, y, z multiplied by x squared plus y squared plus z squared. Great. Now, obviously, and I think most of you have thought about this method already, you're like, oh, yeah, this is easy, I can solve this in 30 seconds, because you can replace x, y, z with numbers provided that the answer is always going to be constant. Here's one couple of things you don't want to happen. You don't want x, y, z to be zero. So we can safely say that if x, y, z does not equal zero, none of them is going to be zero. So that guarantees. And you also don't want x, y plus x, z plus y, z to be zero, you know, so on and so forth. So provided that, uh, we can go ahead and replace x, y, z with some numerical values. So numbers, in other words. How about x equals one? y equals 1 and z equals negative 2. That satisfies the criteria x plus y plus z is equal to 0. And if you plug it into our expression that we're trying to evaluate, we get the following. 1 plus 1 and negative 2 to the fifth power is going to be negative 32 or minus 32, as some people say it. x, y, z is just going to be negative 2. And the sum of the squares is just going to be 1 plus 1 plus 4. Great. So now this is going to be 2 minus 32, which is negative 30. This is going to be negative 2, and this is going to be 6. So from here, the negatives cancel out, and we get 30 divided by 12. Or you can just go ahead and simplify this. You know, divide by 6, you're going to get 5, and the answer is going to be 5 halves, as before. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.